Good morning, everyone. My name is Thomas Carney, and last year at IdeaStream, I spoke to you about a better battery. We've made a lot of progress over the last year, and I'm very excited to share some of that with you today and tell you more about our technology, which is flexible in terms of cell chemistry, sustainable, and inexpensive. And the latter is especially important because state-of-the-art batteries are too expensive. Currently, 45% of the weight and 35% of the cost are due to inactive components. And these include current collectors, separators, membranes, gaskets, and all these components aren't even storing the energy. They're just here to make the battery work. Now the reason so many components are needed comes from the fact that thin electrodes are used. Thin electrodes lead to higher costs and lower energy and power density. With the support of the Despande Center, over the past year, we've been able to develop the technology to fabricate thick electrodes. By putting thicker electrodes into the battery, we can reduce the amount of inactive components and therefore increase the overall energy and power density. We have filed a provisional patent application on our technology, and our intellectual property comprises two portions. The first is the cell architecture, shown here on the bottom left-hand side. We've had to redesign the battery to incorporate thick electrodes. On the right-hand side, I have a picture of the second portion of our intellectual property, the process and the formula to make thick electrodes. Pictured here is an electrode that is approximately 50 times thicker than that of a state-of-the-art electrode. Our technology is a platform technology meaning we can use lithium ion chemistry, we can use aqueous chemistry, and we can use some new chemistries you might hear about here at IdeaStream or coming from other labs at MIT. I'd love to talk more about the details on how we accomplished this technological feat, and I'd be available at the poster session if you're interested. For now, I'll just tell you a little bit, um, one of the highlights we've seen here, one of our cells in the lab has been cycling for 10 months, after being bumped against by grad students and angry undergrads. The energy efficiency we would expect for this cell would be around 80%, and right now we're hitting 73.6. This reflects energy that we get out versus how much we put in. The voltaic efficiency here is a metric of how efficient the overall electrode and cell design is. And finally, the coulombic efficiency is a metric of how stable the actual cell chemistry is. We've been able to develop an efficient technology, but at the end of the day, a huge barrier for commercialization is how much does it cost? And to answer that question, we've built upon a model that our lab has developed in conjunction with academia, industry, and national labs. And this model has seen acceptance in the field. Most recently, the Department of Energy used it to set technical targets for a funding request. Our model takes into account the cost to actually manufacture the battery, as well as the cost to transport the battery, install it, and any additional components that are required for the entire package. Currently, we are predicting the cost of lithium ion to be around $700 per kilowatt hour. With full market penetration and economies of scale, we expect the future cost to be $300 per kilowatt hour. However, this is still too expensive. And in order to really ensure full penetration and adoption of energy storage, we designed our convection battery technology to hit the price point of $200 per kilowatt hour by incorporating these thick electrodes. Over the past year, we've done preliminary market analysis and we've identified a few beachhead markets. The first is peak shaving for manufacturing applications. When shifts are coming on and off, you have personnel switching over, machinery needs to be turned on and turned off. This is going to cause large sparks, sorry, spikes in electrical demand. Um, and by incorporating our battery technology, we can smooth out that overall demand profile and reduce the overall electricity bill that a manufacturing plant owner has to pay. The second application we're looking at is cell phone towers. By federal law, cell phone towers have to have somewhere between eight to 24 hours of backup power for 911 service. 
we believe our technology could replace the incumbent and provide uh, additional benefits for cell phone tower operators. The last beachhead market that we are examining is smart buildings. These are buildings which wish to be almost completely independent from the electrical grid. They can generate their energy through solar panels and to make solar panels work, since the technology is intermittent, you'd need a battery. And we think our battery could fill this role as well as help with the overall heating and cooling demands of the building. In conclusion, my name is Tom Carney. I'm the project lead on this convection battery technology. Our principal investigator is Professor Brushett in the chemical engineering department. We've had the opportunity to have on our team two amazing catalysts, Samir and Pat. If you're interested in more about this technology, I'd love to talk to you about the poster session, um, about the convection battery, and energy storage in general. Thank you for your time.